Hello, and welcome to VPAT Training Module 5, EN301549. So my name is Sam Ogami. I work for HP's Office of Aging and Accessibility. I will be presenting um, some of the content. We also have two other people who will be helping out with this module. Go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Sherry. And Hi, I'm Sherry Bernhaber. I founded the VMware Accessibility Program, and I'm currently an accessibility architect doing strategy and outreach. And uh, uh, fielding questions and monitoring the chat will be Laura. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Laura Rinfro. I work with Sam at an eight in HP's Office of Aging and Accessibility. And if you just put your questions in chat, we'll make sure to get them answered. Thank you. Thank you. So this is module five out of eight modules. Um, so this one's on the EN301549. Um, in this module, we'll be covering um, the EN301549 criteria, um, how to apply those criteria to different types of technologies, and show the specific sections of the VPAT um, where you need to put the information that cover the EN30549 criteria. Um, so recommendation is that you watch the previous modules, especially modules one through three before um, this one, uh, so that you have a good background on the information. So what is EN301549? It is a accessibility requirement for uh, information and communication technology, ICT products and services. Um, these are a set of different uh, requirements uh, that are applied for um, purchasing in uh, the European Union, Britain, Australia, and other countries have adopted uh, the EN 301549 accessibility standard. Um, the latest version of the EN 301549 can be found at Etsy's website, and that's etsi.org. Um, and you can do a search there for the standards and it'll um, give you the latest one. Um, they do update the standards from time to time. The current version is version 3.1.1. So the EN301549 has 13 clauses within it. Um, and the clauses that we'll specifically be focusing on have tech, are where the technical requirements are. And those are nine clauses starting at clause number five, going through clause 13. Um, as we refer to different clauses um, and parts of the standard, um, we'll, you'll see some of the notation as um, you know, uh, 4.2.1 or some decimal uh, value there. And that just is a specific reference to where in the standard. Um, we're referencing. So again, similar with any types of products or filling out um, requirements, you need to first determine what your product is and what functionality it has and how that's applicable to accessibility. So examining things like, does it have documentation and support, which almost uh, all products do? Is it a hardware, a software, or some combination of that? Does your product uh, product include third-party products within it. So again, that uh, by determining the functionality and understanding what your product is, that will help you to understand when to apply, what to apply, and, and uh, what is appropriate there. So again, this is determined by your product's functionality and how it's going to be used. Um, so every time, always for all products, you need to make sure to include clause 12 and clause five. Um, these have to do with documentation and support services, which I'll be talking about in the next slide um, and in future slides about clause five. Um, for all hardware products, there's clause eight. For software, depending on if it's web or software, there's a clause nine and 11. And then uh, for specific situations, would be clauses six, which is ICT with two-way communication, seven, ICT with video capabilities, clause 10, non-web documents, and clause 13, ICT providing relay or emergency services. So again, for uh, clauses that apply all the time or every time is clause 12. And again, this has to do with documentation and support services. Um, this is clause 12.1, which, which will go over document um, and support services. 
Um, so these have to do with the compatibility, accessibility and compatibility features and the documentations. 12.1.2 um, is completed within the WCAG section of the ACR. 12.2 um, support services um, these have to do with the information and uh, compatibility of uh, features. Um, and 12.2.4 has to do again with accessibility documentation, which will also be completed in the WCAG se se uh, section of the ACR. Um, and just a reminder that WCAG does not just mean web, it applies to other things like PDFs um, and other types of um, documentation and, and uh, software. So um, just keep that in mind when you're filling out the ACR that it is not just exclusive to the web. The next clause that applies every time is clause five and um, it has lots of different parts of it. And depending on the different types of functionality or of, of your ICT product, um, different sections of this clause will be um, applicable to you. So um, in general, there's, there's uh, for hardware, like closed hardware functionality or not closed hardware. And that means that you can attach or install a system technology to the piece of hardware. Um, then there's also the category software and web. Um, so the first part of, of uh, clause five is 5.1 closed products. And this is going to apply to hardware that is closed, um, but not to software web, uh, to software and web. 5.2 is activation of accessibility features. And this will apply to everything. Um, and uh, 5.3 is biometrics. And this will apply to everything. Um, 5.4 is preservation of accessibility information during uh, conversion, and this will apply to everything. 5.5 um, has to do with operable parts, and this will apply to uh, hardware, both closed and, and not closed, and software, um, but not web, because there, there's information on this in, in, the, in the web section in WCAG that you would probably put that in. Um, so 5.6 is locking or toggle controls. Uh, this will apply to everything except for web. Uh, 5.8 is a double strike key acceptance, and this will apply to everything except for web. And 5.9 is simultaneous user actions, and this will apply to everything except for web. But one thing I want to mention here is about either closed or non-closed functionality. Um, be, uh, be aware that that is partially determined about how the product is going to be installed or implemented by the customer. So um, if your product could be used in a closed functionality environment, um, you are required to fill out the closed functionality parts of it. Pri uh, criteria that only apply to um, hardware is clause eight. Um, and there, uh, so 8.1 has general hardware requirements. Um, 8.2 has to do with uh, products that will provide speech output. 8.3 has to do with stationary uh, information communication technology, I, uh, ICT. And um, in here, uh, these were have to do with the height and the reach and uh, forward reach, side reach, and so forth, uh, change in level. Uh, 8.4 is about mechan uh, mechanically oper operable parts. And 8.5 has to do with tactile indication of speech mode. So there are uh, similarities to section 508, but there, um, they are harmonized, but there are differences in there. So please, uh, you need to be aware of those and report to them accordingly for things. Uh, and an example would be uh, tactile indication of speech mode to make sure that you um, report on how you meet these requirements. So I will hand it over now to Sherry. We'll talk about uh, web and software. Oh, you're still on mute. Thanks, Sam. Just waiting for my uh, screen refresh to catch up here. We're still on Clause 8, so there we go. So the two primary things I'm going to discuss today are web and software. Those are very big categories that lots of people fall into. For the software section in Clause 11, you must complete WCAG no matter what type the software it is. So because this is EN301549, the WCAG uh, level that you're going to want to be filling this out to is 2.1. And W3C has, fill, has provided a document called Applying uh, WCAG to Non-Web ICT. You'll be able to find it on the w3.org site. 
uh, and search for the term probably non hyphen web uh, would be the best search term to find it. Next slide. So there are exceptions to WCAG in the EN301549. And you'll see in this block of information where we've got WCAG criteria in the first column and then three columns after it, whether it applies to non-web documents, whether it applies to non-web software, and whether it applies to closed functionality software. EN301549 tends to use uh, some inconsistent language, but basically the the rule is if you see the words void, not applicable, or does not have to be completed, that tells you that those sections uh, don't need to be done for what it is that you're disclosing. So the first uh, WCAG criteria that is not always applicable is uh, 2.4.1, which is bypass blocks. It is not applicable to any of the three categories, uh, non-web documents, non-web software, or closed functionality software. Page titles are required for non-web documents, but not required for non-web software or closed functionality software. 2.4.5 multiple ways is not required for any of the three categories. 3.1.2 language of parts is required for non-web documents, but not required for the other two categories. The consistent navigation and consistent identification guidelines, which are 3.2.3 and 3.2.4 are not required for any of the three categories. And then the final three, which are the uh, pillar number four guidelines for parsing, name role and value and status message are required for both non-web documents and non-web software, but not required for closed functionality software. So next we're gonna talk about clause 11, which is software. Clause 11 applies to non-web software, command line interface, native mobile apps and closed functionality software. So now we're going to talk about some clauses that ap apply to very specific situations, which means generally, unless you're doing something uh, that's fairly unusual, these clauses will not apply to you. So we're going to talk about clause six, which is ICT with two-way voice communication, clause seven, which is ICT when you have video capabilities, and clause 13, which is ICT that's providing relay or emergency service access. So there are criteria that apply sometimes, and those come under clause four. There, there are functional performance statements, and those come under the categories of 4.2.1, which is, which is usage without vision, 4.2.2, which is usage with limited vision, 4.2.3, which is usage with, without perception of color. And by the way, if you're Googling uh, this, you need to use the uh, European spelling of the word color uh, because it's got the U in it and otherwise you might not find what you're looking for. 4.2.4, usage without hearing. 4.2.5, usage with limited hearing. 4.2.6, usage with no or limited vocal capability. 4.2.7, usage with limited manipulation or strength. 4.2.8, usage with limited reach. 4.2.9, minimizing photosensitive seizure triggers. 4.2.10, usage with limited cognition, language, or learning. And 4.2.11, which is privacy. So when you're filling out the EU section of the VPAT, there are two different VPAT templates you can choose. One is the EN edition, where you're only disclosing the EN standards. And one is the international edition, which is where you can disclose multiple standards, including the EU standards. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to mark yes under included in report in the standard or guideline at the top of the ACR, which says EN301549 accessibility requirements suitable for public procurement of ICT products services in Europe. And as Sam mentioned, the current standard as of the date of this recording is version 3.1.1, which was published in November of 2019. So when you are filling out the WCAG 2.x report section for the EU VPAT, and presumably it's going to be 
uh, you're going to be reporting to both 2.0 and 2.1 standards. You'll need to look at the uh, functional criteria, uh, which come under the criteria column. Where, so for example, where it says non-text contacts uh, content for uh, level A uh, WCAG criteria 1.1.1, you'll see that it will call out all of the specific EN301549 criteria that also are triggered here. And you will need to provide disclosures for the conformance level for web, electronic documents, software, closed software, and authoring tools. If any of these are not supports, partially supports, not applicable, you'll need to also fill out the remarks and explanations section uh, with the corresponding five different uh, categories in, on the right-hand side. So when you're filling out sections uh, for the very specific situations that we talked about, such as voice communication, you'll see that the criteria are very specific to that technology. So for example, under chapter, under clause six, you'll see requirements for things like RTT communication, concurrent voice and text, visual indicator of, R, of audio with RTT, uh, clearly, if you're not this type of product, you just mark this as do not apply and, uh, and move on. So the resources that you should refer to for more information on completing this section of the uh, ACR is the EN301549 document itself on the Etsy website, and Etsy is spelled E-T-S-I, and there is a about 160 page, I think, PDF file that uh, contains all of the information, details, and definitions that you may need to refer back to in order to complete this section correctly. Now I'll go ahead and start the next slide because I'm pretty sure it's the thank you slide. So uh, we thank you uh, for attending this training. And in particular, we want to thank the vendors uh, that have been involved with ITI who helped produce the training. Those companies are, hopefully I don't leave any out, uh, Oh, questions or feedback. So uh, you, if you have any questions, you can email info at itic.org or call 1-202-737-8888. And the next slide is definitely the thank you slide. And we want to thank uh, the vendors who are involved in producing this training, creating the material and doing the recording, which are HP, Lexmark, IBM, VMware, I'm leaving out two. What are the final two, Sam? Intel and Oracle. Intel and Oracle. Thank you.